On this episode of the Cash Compound Podcast, we talk about building wealth from the ground up. You got to start with a good foundation. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Cash Compound Podcast. I'm your host, Jonah Dew, and with me today, again, it's been a few weeks, but we've got Robert Lee, one of our banking bros, banking bro Rob, I think he goes by online, uh, back with us, and we've got a very interesting topic to talk about today, right? Yes, sir, we do. So today's topic is all about starting from scratch, building wealth from the ground up. Right. So we're going to give our tips and tricks. We're going to talk about some of the things that we think are important to pay attention to. It, you know, Robert, this was actually kind of funny because uh, on the way over to the to the studio here this morning, uh, my mom's in town, actually. And uh, my mom, actually, one of the things that we teach all, everyone who's listening to us are these infinite banking policies. Right. But my mom actually just recently got her first one. OK. So on the way over here this morning, she had some questions about starting from scratch. Right. And it's kind of funny because I'm, I mean, I'm a little bit removed from starting from scratch, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but I help people all the time who are starting from scratch. And it's just funny that sh- that she was like, well, you know, I needed to learn a few things. So I as you know, I started watching a few episodes of the podcast. <laughs> and now, now she, normally she does pay attention, but but she had a few more uh, interesting questions today. And yeah. that really helped me uh, formulate some of my ideas around how to build wealth starting from scratch. So that's that's yeah. what our topic's about today. Yeah, man, that's uh that's 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 funny. Uh that I remember when I first was meeting you guys, you was like, Yeah, uh, we've been doing this for a while. Our mom doesn't have a policy or that uh, you were you were talking about like different people in your family that doesn't have policies or whatever the case is. And to see that she has one now, that's awesome. That means that we, we might be doing something right. Might ho- hopefully. We might <laughs> hopefully, right? We might be doing something right. So that was fun. We had a little conversation about that. So kind of our first point, our first point in building wealth from scratch, starting from the bottom, you, yeah. is we should talk about setting some goals, setting some financial goals, right? So speak to that a little bit, Robert. Tell us wh- I mean, what's the importance of setting goals and uh yeah, I think it's really important to set goals and uh, the the main reason why you want to set goals is it makes it easier to envision whatever it is that you want to make possible. And it kind of breaks that up, uh, like the how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, bite right? At a time, yep. And so it's it's exactly that is that I want to be able to envision this, and more importantly too, I think that uh, a, a dream is something that only you can see, but a vision is something that you can make possible for other people to perceive that as well. And so if people can see your vision, they're willing to follow you, and that's something that you're going to need on your journey is people to 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 follow yourself, and also people that's willing to follow you. To help you get to where you want to go. So I think uh, writing those goals and having them down and, and being able to envision that is important. Yeah, I think somebody once told me, and you'll have to forgive me, I'm going to I'm gonna butcher. If I try to remember who actually said it, I'm going to mess that all up. It. But yeah, you know the doing. comments are going to let us know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but someone once told me, what you track expands. And so I take that to consideration when like we're that. talking about setting financial goals. If you're if you're not putting it on paper, writing it down, you know, putting it on the fridge, making a vision board, then it's not a goal. You're, you're wishing. Well I, well, I hope one day, right? Yeah, I'll make it eventually. It's, I don't know how like I'm gonna dream, get there. Right? I don't like know a, how I'm yeah. gonna get there. I don't know. I don't know step one, two, three. Four, yeah. I don't. I don't know any of that. I just know, you know, ten step ten would be real cool. We'll, we'll get there one day. But I think it's really, really important to set those financial goals. So, do you have any tips or tricks on on how you personally set financial goals, and and you can tell others how to do it effectively if if it's working for you? Yeah, I, I will give one of my. I think it's. I guess the greatest gem of setting goals financially, it would be to, you need to start thinking of things inside of uh, the quantity of something and, and, and then the value of something. So if something has a value, I would rather, for an example, let's take Bitcoin for an example. All right. At one point in time, one Bitcoin was worth 50, almost $60,000 a coin per coin. Yeah. Right. So imagine if you were someone who could have bought multiple Bitcoins while the price was low. Sure. Versus when the price goes up, now that same person might have only been able to afford a fraction of a Bitcoin, right? Sure. Yep. So sometimes you want to look at or, or shares of a stock, right, or, or just different types of investments or, or, or even how many dollars do I want to save, right? How many, how many dollars do I want to have inside of my banking system or – Inside of uh, even cash or whatever, like when you start to look at things inside of, okay, this is the number of something that I want instead of the price of something, it helps you to accumulate it better. I like it. 
So one, yeah. one of the tips and tricks that I've always used for a long time, and this is even before kind of diving headfirst into this financial education realm that I've been in the, for the last uh, few years here. But one of the things that I've always used that was really helpful is I work backward. All right. So here's what I mean. If my goal is, is 10 on, on the scale of all the steps I need to do to accomplish that goal, one, two, three, four, five, all the way to 10, my goal is 10. I work backward then. Right. Hmm. So, so think about it like this. One of the goals that I have, this is a, this is not a financial goal. This is just something fun that I always wanted to do in my life. Right. But one of the things that I really want is, is courtside Lakers tickets, right? TV side, court side, Lakers tickets. So, yeah. so you got to think of, you got to nice. work backward. Yeah. Right. So if, if, if I have the ability to be at 40 home games, basketball games, sitting okay. courtside, what does my life look like? And, and back up and walk it backward to know how I can get there and how I can accomplish that. Right. It's Ooh. fun for me to go, Oh, sitting courtside would be great. But, it, but if I actually want to accomplish that thing, we need steps in order to get there. It's almost like that when you lose sense. something and then you try to like backtrack to find it. There it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. I there like it that. is. And you got to like work that. backward. Right. So, okay. So if I'm going to 40 games in a season, where do I live? Do I live close to LA? Am I flying in for those 40 games? Oh, yeah, you see what I'm saying? That's nice. That's nice. You got to back, you got to, you got to back up a little bit more. How much, how much time do I have? Am I taking my family with me or taking my kids with how me? Are you traveling? Am I taking my yeah. friends with me? Who's coming with me? Yeah. Back up a little bit more. Right. And you can walk it all the way back to, okay, well now I know that these things are, 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 are milestones on the way to accomplish the goal that I want. If you do it for things like finances, right? Uh, uh, like a lot of big purchases, cars, houses, you can do it uh, this way as well as you start making these big purchases. Okay. So listen, I want to buy a brand new house. It's going to cost me half a million dollars, $500,000 for this house. Okay. Right. I want this house purchased by, uh, 2025, the year 2025 in June. Okay. Right. So now let's back up a little bit. Okay, great. If I'm going to purchase this house by June, 2025. Am I paying for it in cash? Am I paying for it out of policy loans that we teach people to do? Right. Am I paying for it? Am I getting a, a note? Okay, if I am, what type of note is that? How much money do they require? How much policy money do I, how much deposits do I need to have put in my policy in order to get the policy loans, right? Back it up. Okay, so if I need, right, a policy worth $200,000 so that there's cash value available, that policy's either got to be two, three, four, five, six years old from this time, or I have to have put in this much money, so I'll have the money. Back it up a little bit more. Okay, so that means I need to be doing this right now. You see what I'm saying? You just I, I just walk into it backward. So then you get all the way to today, and I can go, well, what, what that means for me today is I need to be saving this amount of money each month, each week, each paycheck, mm -hmm. and it has to be going into this spot where I've decided I'm going to use it. And if I don't do that, I'm not going to be able to hit that goal. I've just backed it up the whole way so I know exactly what I need in order to accomplish that goal that I want. So for me, uh, it kind of goes back to that saying, like I mentioned, um, you know, what you track expands. And if you have goals, but you don't have steps in order to get there, are they goals or are they just dreams and wishes, right? We yeah. want to accomplish that. Yeah. That's, so, okay, let's, let's talk about budgeting and saving strategies. Here's what I wanted to ask you. Um, talk to me about creating a budget. Talk to me about tracking expenses. Talk to me about different saving strategies, how you make them work for you. What have you done in the past? What are you doing now? Uh, yeah. So for one is I don't, so I'm really big on Robert Kiyosaki. I think savers are losers and I agree with him. I think that if you put cash anywhere, uh, somewhere that it cannot accumulate interest and it, d it doesn't draw any interest, then it, you're not saving. You're actually losing based on the inflation rate. And the price of things rising in comparison to your dollars. You see the price of eggs these days. Yeah, remaining stagnant. Crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yep. think, think about it. Your, your dollars remain stagnant, and they're not working just as hard for you as you do for them. So when you put them somewhere that where they where you can save, where they are working hard for you, then you are then you know that is savings. So that's important to understand first and foremost is what is savings, right? And then from there is my strategy is I don't save inside of a traditional bank. Obviously, banking bros. One of the things I do is I put my money into my whole life insurance contract designed for banking with a mutual company, and that's how I do my saving as far as, like, cash. Outside of that, I am a precious metals investor. Okay. So uh, – We're talk I, about investing just a sec. But, oh, okay. But go, ahead. Ahead. go ahead. So I do some – that's another form of savings for me is I think that uh, over time they've been able to beat 
inflation and hedge against inflation. And we saw this over uh, thousands of years, not just most recently. And so I like things I like things that stand the test of time. Uh, and I like to see that it's going to be able to uh, – it's going to be worth more later than it is now. So if I would say what what's budgeting, first, first and foremost is I don't try to create a budget. That might sound crazy, but I don't try to create a budget. So I see what it, what it is I'm spending, and then I try to cut back on whatever it is. So, okay, this is how much I'm on average I spend on food. Okay. Let me try to, like, cut it off on, like, $500 a month. Okay. So you're saying if it was $550, $560, 570 exactly. exactly. you might look at that. Now, how often are you making those type of adjustments? So I try to look So I try to look at it. I try to look at it, like, for the what I would like to do, like, on a monthly basis for the year. Okay, I want to do, like, $500 a month on food. But how does that look? Like, if it means unhealthy options to get the 500 then I need to adjust something else somewhere else. Okay like leisure or entertainment wise to then reallocate that to, to uh, my food. And so it's, I think the, the budgeting for me is I want to see what I'm spending. And then from there, I'm going to say, okay, here's the needs and here's the wants. Yep. Uh, the here's, and of course the wants is what I'm willing to sacrifice more of than my needs. And so from there, that's going to help uh, budget because honestly you only need what you need. And what you want is all, is always optional for the most part. Sure. And so I try to. That's how I try to budget it. Is I always cut cut back on the wants, give more to the needs, and uh, from there, as far as saving is, when I'm able to then save money from doing budgeting. Yep. That money has to go somewhere where it's going to work harder for me than I worked for it. I like it. You know, the people at home are thinking about that answer. A standing ovation answer right there. That's good. I like the way that that works. So yeah. let me tell you a little bit about what I like to do, um, just so you get a different perspective, right? We're two different people. Now we're friends. We live in the same town. We're obviously doing a podcast together sure. in the same room, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're uh, listening to us on your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you're listening to. Uh, but that doesn't mean we do everything exactly the same, right? So let me give you a different perspective in the way that, that I like to do things. So um, again, uh, you guys are going to think I'm weird, but but what you track expands. So I pay attention uh, on a monthly basis to where money went in my family, right? So I'm married and I've got two little kids. So for all those who have kids at home, you know what that means. That means expenses come up and stuff happens, right? This month uh, at our house, we had to register for next year's school. So mm -hmm. so it's kind of like we had two months worth of school payments and a little extra because you got to register and you got to do all this stuff, right? So I want to have money for that. So if you're not paying attention to that, you might not realize. But if you track, then it's nothing really comes as a surprise. Now, again, emergencies still happen. Emergencies yeah. oh, can yeah, happen, they're, they're, right? They're going to happen. But a lot of times, a lot of this stuff can be tracked. So one of the things that I like to do is you, you take a look at January of last year. What happened in that month? What do we spend money on? Why? Oh, Registration was in that month. It's just right here. I, I know how much we spent on it. Hey, how much is registration going to be this month? It's this month, right? Oh, yeah, it is this month. Let's. It's this much. Okay, so so now I know. Going in January 1, I already knew that was coming. So if I know it's coming, not so much of a surprise. I can plan for it. You see what I'm saying? At the same time, um, I like to set certain parameters around certain areas. So kind of like you said, with the eating out or groceries or whatever it is, I have certain thresholds that we need to stay under. So exactly. it's not how much, it's not, you watch every dollar. It's not that. Yeah, exactly. It's a threshold that you need to stay under. So if you want the new thing that just came out and the new ice cream flavor, right? They're putting little Debbie cakes and ice cream flavors yeah. now, you know, right? If you want to go get the new Debbie cake, go, go for it. But there's a threshold to stay under, right? Yeah. So that's how I like to do the things in my house. And again, uh, as well as you said, tracking expenses, tracking expenses is important for me. Because if you track them, you can easily cut back if need be. You can easily track where your money's going. You can easily track how much extra is being saved, spent, whatever it is. So I always, always, always track. Me personally, I do that on a monthly basis. I have a conversation with my spouse on a monthly basis. We talk about what just happened, what we want to see different for next month. We move forward. Does that make sense? So that's the way that I like to do my budgeting. And uh, saving strategies, just like you said, actually, I don't use traditional savings accounts. I think that they're pointless. They're a waste of time. There's really no benefit to them, right? They're not doing anything but making the money convenient to get to. There's a lot of other places where you can save and spend at the same time. One exactly. of the things that we teach, our exactly. infinite banking policies, that is where the majority of my savings money rests. That's where my emergency fund rests. That's where money that's come from my next investment rests. That's where uh, all sorts of things go. So uh, speaking of investments, 
we got we got another one coming. So we want to talk about investing. We want to talk about investing, right? Mm-hmm. The, again, the t- the podcast topic here is building wealth from the ground up. So we've talked a little bit about setting a goal. How important is that to set that goal, right? I gave you a little lofty goal, sitting by the game every night, but I yeah. gave you more attainable goals. You want a house that's half a million dollars sitting in the lake? Let's write that down and let's backtrack till we get there. Does that make sense? Yeah. We talked about budgeting and saving. How are you going to accomplish that goal if you're not paying attention to where your money's headed? Yeah, where you it's gotta, going? You got to know what's going on on the field. Yeah, you got to know what's going on, right? And then, then now let's talk about investing. Investing, of course, in its pure form is uh, putting some money somewhere or investing time, energy, effort, whatever it is, into something that you think can be more beneficial as time goes on. So last uh, few, so it was about two weeks ago, you were on the episode uh, with us. We talked a little bit about the type of investing that yeah. you were doing. Direct and indirect. D- direct and So give us, give us the people who weren't paying attention two weeks ago. Tell it to them one more time. Say it again for the people in the back. Yeah, so with that being said is, you got direct investing and indirect investing. So direct investing is when you personally, like I was saying earlier, I think about uh, in, in how much of something, like financial goals, how much of something can I own? If I go and I directly buy Bitcoin, if I go and directly buy Apple shares or Amazon shares or just whatever it is directly, I own that particular uh, entity and, and, and store of value yep. is what these things can be looked at as. As okay, if you go and buy the S and P five hundred, how many companies are within that? Right. You see what I'm saying? The NAS one hundred. That's one hundred top. Yeah. Tech I was going to say that. I was going to say. I assume S and P five hundred at least started at five hundred. Whether they're yeah. at five hundred yeah, exa- today, exactly, I don't know. Exactly. But at least started. You have at the NAS one hundred. Yep. The NAS one hundred is another entities, and that has the one hundred top tech companies. Yep. So uh, you have to look at okay, out of all five hundred, or out of all one hundred. Who's the top performers? Like in the S and P five hundred, the the market cap weighting is only on five major companies. Yep. The rest of the four hundred and ninety five, which is not that anymore, but a lot of those are zombie companies. Yep. So if you're investing in and you in you, what I want to do is I want to just go and it's not that you're you're not going to pick losers sometimes, but I want to pick winners for sure. I want to be able to control directly what it is I think is going to. So I think Tesla is going to be better than Ford. So so let me break it down for the people that are in the back like me. I'm yeah. a little slower when it comes to this. I didn't grow up with a big let's invest. Let's have family discussions about money. I didn't grow up with that. Right. So when you're saying indirect investing, you might be talking about things like qualified plans. Even. That is well. That is right. well. So think about that. It's like I said with the S&P 500 and these indices. These indexes control 401ks, That's right. IRAs, Roth accounts. That's why I said it's the, indir- it's the indirect investing. It, it doesn't matter if it's the ETF, uh, some kind of a mutual fund. Uh, a lot of the things that we're doing is indirect investing. And so that's what people don't realize is that you can actually take in more control over your investments. And when you do, it actually makes investing a whole bunch more safe because you you have the stop losses and the take profits. You start to set the limits to what's going to happen. If you put money into a 401k right now, how do you know what's going to happen 20 years from now? You, you don't. Do you decide when to get out? You sure don't. Uh, when to get out? No, they've decided for you already. You've already yep. got to. Exactly. Yep. So when these markets are in cycles. You just gotta pray, hope, and pray that when right. that and you're a on a good part of that cycle. A lot of people put their money there, hoping. Well, I, I've got a little bit of pet peeve about these retirement accounts. I know that's not the point of what you were saying, but I got a little pet peeve because people say things like, "Oh, I'm saving for retirement," and then they go list a bunch of investment accounts. They're investing for retirement. They're investing for retirement. That's not mm-hmm. saving, yeah. right? That's my pet peeve. But anyway, let's get back to it. What's happening is that people put their money in these places where they don't have any control. There's exactly. there's really no control. And then when something happens, good or bad, they, they're, oh, look, look, I'm so good. Or look, it's so bad. And it was like, you knew it was an investment vehicle. At least maybe you didn't call it that, but you knew. You knew you didn't have control. Why are we surprised? Are you familiar at all with like the biggest, this is like supposed to be the biggest Ponzi scheme in history, the FTX debacle? I'm not familiar. So in total assets, they had about $62 billion. Okay. They lost about $33 billion in customer funds. So people invested into FTX, the company, okay. the the coin. They have their own coin and project. Okay. And also, too, it was that they had customer funds. It's called custodialism. So 
custodialism is to be a custodian is talking about where you hold your funds. So if I hold my cryptocurrency or stocks or whatever with a particular, it's a, it's a little bit different between stocks because you get a certificate. But with cryptocurrency, there is no, there's only something on the blockchain that says you bought it, but it doesn't say exactly who bought it. You see what I'm saying? Sure. So when this individual leaves their crypto on this platform, FTX was then lending that money out to someone to Alameda, which is a third party company for investing. Okay. So people by leaving their money somewhere where they didn't have control over it, like a 401k or something like that, they were indirectly being leveraged and investing into a third party company that they had no clue even existed or was doing that with their money. And every, I'm not going to say everyone, the majority of retail investors, I would say, lost their money. Not just Kevin O'Leary off of Shark Tank, yep. Mr. Wonderful, yep. lost money. If Kevin O'Leary lost over $10 million. I'm sure you did. I'm uh, sure a lot yeah. of more people lost a lot That's of right. money. So 30, $32 billion is a lot. We talk about control pretty often on this podcast, on our channel, right? One of the reasons we talk about that is we, as I, and as I get older, I'm starting to realize that control is much more important than I used to think it was. It's more, I think it's more important than the growth now. Uh, right. I'm kind of, I'm leaning that direction. Control is really, really, really important. One of the ways that you can control your money is kind of based on where our money starts, right? We, we do some investing. My, my style of investing is, is real estate investing. That's what I like, okay? That, that okay. means either, uh, that could be flips, that could be long-term rentals, that could be short-term rentals, private that could lending. be private lending. Okay. It could be Things all like sorts okay. of stuff. Gotcha. But I like real estate investing. I'm starting to lean a little bit more toward private lending uh, because I don't have to do very much, right? Yeah. Long-term rentals, there's the, always the possibility without a strong uh, middleman and property, property manager, manager and all yeah. that, that you got to give up your Saturday and go change some carpet, right? Oh, yeah. And I, it's not my thing. <clears throat> With private lending, I can loan someone the money, given the promissory note is in the correct order, first lien position, second lien position. I can feel safe to know that, well, if they default, then I'll obtain a property. And if they do not default, then I'll get my check. And I don't have to leave the couch, right? So that, that's my, my style of investing. But the question is, and you've got a different style of investing, uh, right? You've talked about a few coins. I know pe the people who are paying attention know that you're a day trader, right? Yeah. You've got talked about a few different styles of investing. But the important part, in my opinion, is where we're both getting the money from to do the investments, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, and so <clears throat> if you, I think it's important, and this is something I had to, I wish I came across Infinite Banking earlier, just so that if... If you start to incur losses in any type of investment, everything implies that it's going to have some kind of risk and it could go the opposite direction. Sure. While we're doing is just putting our money inside of a safe place first. So I think the thing uh, that I see the most, and a lot of people that are, have already felt a little bit of success, sometimes like tasting the champagne is not too early is not good. Sure. I'm, I'm with you on like, that. Like I was lucky enough to be like, hmm, I see that this works, but – oh, man, this infinite banking thing sounds great, and it sounds like it can make what I do better. A lot of people, it's like, well, I'm already, you know, kind of successful in real estate. I'm already, I already make pretty good money on my yep. job or whatever the case is. Why do I need to go through the trouble of adding something else to my financial planning? There it and is. what it is is that. Tasting is it the champagne a little too early. Exactly. And, it, and I think the arrival syndrome, I know you guys had an episode about that, That's you right. and Jeremiah. And so I think what it is is that a lot of people are, are – at, they don't want to be active in their finances. They, they're they kind of lazy. They like giving up some of that control if it means not having the responsibility of dealing with their money. But what we're saying is, hey. You got to take that responsibility. You got to take responsibility because it's control and it's power over your money. And more importantly is that we're not doing something that has us working crazy. We don't do anything. No. We, we have a whole life insurance contract with a mutual company yep. who grows our deposits for us. We don't go take it to the company, then figure out how to grow it and all this other no, stuff. We don't have to do that. The, then, of course, yeah. while we've got that going on, we've got available cash value. Yeah, that money. we can take the loan against the policy, leverage the policy, take a loan go. against the policy. That we can go make and do, investments. Go do our investments with. Right? And then choose how and when to pay ourselves back. And when we do, unlike traditional banking, you keep the money that you pay back. That's it. It's two birds, one stone. I didn't sacrifice. I didn't have to say, it's infinite banking or for real estate. It's infinite banking or stocks or Bitcoin or – and so that's the thing. Everybody's – it's the give and take, give and take when it's not. It's the and asset. You can I, have both. I think a lot of times we're taught as we're coming up to give up that control. 
right? Yeah. They teach us that. Someone yeah. else can manage it a little bit better than you can manage it. It's okay. Put your money in this plan program. Yeah, you're a doctor, wherever. you're a lawyer, you're a nurse or whoever. You, yeah. sh- you That's what you do. You, you're you not a financial person. No, everybody is a financial planner. You're, you're your own financial planner. That's it. I think R. Nelson Nash said in his book that we love so much, Becoming Your Own Banker, fifth edition, the black one, he said everyone should be in two businesses, the business of where you make your living and the banking business, yeah. right? I think it's really, really important to, when you, to, to switch that switch in your mind and talk about control. Talk about how important that is. You can control where you're putting your money, how it's growing, and still have the ability to go do those investments that you're interested in, whatever investment portfolio might fit your boat. But, uh, but you've got to know where the money should come from to do it. Right. No one wants to take money straight out of their pockets, out of their income, put it in the investment and the investment flops, fails. And you've lost all that money, all that capital. Nobody wants to do that. But yet time after time after time, people are doing it because they're assuming, oh, there's no really other good option. I don't know what else to do. Right. Where we're obviously teaching something a little bit differently, what we call our save and spend system. Save yours spin theirs. So I love it. Okay. uh, Talk to us a little bit about uh, what what do you think about diversification with these investments? Yeah. So um, I comes back to Robert Kiyosaki once again. So so he said the rich doesn't diversify. Okay. And what he meant by that is he's not saying that you go all in on one thing. I've heard a lot. Explain because I've heard I've heard a little differently. Yeah. Ray Diallo also right here. Ray Diallo is uh, at one point in time was the 25th billionaire inside of America. He might have moved up the list by now. But um, Ray Diallo, he says that diver- diversification is ultimately important. Warren Buffett will tell you that the, uh, diversification is ultimately important. I agree with both sides because I think they're saying the same thing in a different way. Okay. And I'll give you an example. Amazon shares crashed uh, 95% back when the dot-com bubble first busted at $5 a share. Okay. Had you went all in on Amazon... You wouldn't have not. You wouldn't have needed to buy any more stocks for the rest of your life. Sure, you'd be a multimillionaire or a billionaire, depending on how much you bought, right? Yep. Or you could have diversified. You would have lived an okay life, but you probably would still be working a job right now or something because the majority of the stocks from the dot com bubble busted. Yep. So it's about when think and think about like you said it on the last uh, episode that we had together. You put the majority of your income into your infinite banking policy. That's right. Why don't you diversify? Huh. You, you're not. You, the people at home aren't ready for my answer. You see what I'm saying? One of the reasons that I, I personally do not is because I think a lot of people are caught up in this idea of diversification, and and the opposite in my mind of diversification is focus. A lot of people get caught exactly. up in this diversification; they exactly. refuse to focus. Exactly on one that they know will work, mm-hmm. one that takes a little bit of work to work it, and they won't mm-hmm. do it. Exactly. For me, personally, I'm going, listen, I like I like other things, right? We've had lots of conversations where you're like, Jonah, you, you should really look into day trading. Yeah. You, you, yeah. I, yeah. Based on your personality, you'd kill it. And I'm not saying that I won't look into day trading, but what what have I told you a few you times? Gotta, you gotta I'm f- saying I have to focus, focus right now. Exactly, exactly. I and so, and right I can't now. even knock that. So that's the thing about it is that I think diversification is understanding that you take the best of what you can find and then you focus in on that. So I'm going to I'm going to look into okay, here's the top companies or or whatever the case is and then I'm going to pour the majority of my money all into that. Yep. And then I'll be I might have a little speculative bag on the side that I use uh to you know, speculate on something that I know doesn't have much value behind it or fundamentals behind it. There it is. But I think that you should find the best of what you can invest into and then so yeah, diversify yourself but don't don't spread yourself so thin because you won't make any money. There it is. You'll have too many. The market is set up with more losers than it is winners. On one of our last episodes together, we talked about the importance of education. And I think that I'd be remiss if we got past this point and didn't bring that back up, the importance of education. Yes, I'm not saying to have a one-track mind, right? The arrival syndrome, as you mentioned before. Oh, I'm good. I figured it out. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. I didn't say that. It's a little tricky to talk about focus and also talk about don't have the arrival syndrome. But what I'm saying is if you – I'm saying be, edu- be be open, right? Be open to the other ideas, the other avenues, what other people are doing. Take take uh, le- ownership in learning more, watching those videos, right? Subscribing to YouTube University and watching what people are doing. But at the same time, don't get, don't, don't get uh, turned on by everything that's shiny, right? Yeah. 
You see what I'm saying? Everything that's shiny is not gold. Focus on what you're doing. If you find something that you like, that works for you, that you know will work, focus. Focus, focus, focus. When you've accomplished something, a goal that you've set, that you can work backward and make sure that you've got the steps aligned and you accomplish that, maybe at that point, take a breath, look around, see what's happening, right? But, But I think a lot of people get caught up in this diversification. They jump to diversification right from the jump. They never focus on anything. They got money in all sorts of places. They're doing all sorts of things. They do uh, 10 things 2% well. You see what I'm saying? And it's like you could have done one thing. Uh, how Ten, many? Uh, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And, and that's that's yeah, my two, that, that's, that's my, my long answer. I kind of I just realized I got a little pet peeve on that. No, no, you're good, I man. How going. many cryptocurrencies do you think there is? I have no idea. There's uh, over 22,000 cryptocurrencies. I believe it. So how do you diversify into 22,000 different things? Unless you got a lot of money, you probably don't. That's the whole point. You gotta pick. And so exactly. You gotta pick and, choose, and so right? and exactly. And so the, I think what people have to understand is that that's that's where the financial education comes into play. If you don't understand, <clears throat> the majority of people that talk about any kind of stock, cryptocurrencies, or different mutual, any con- different types of investments for the most part, and when you or even like day trading, different types of uh, money making strategies, or or you know, drop shipping, all this different stuff. The majority of people are not, at, they don't actually know how, and I'll, I'll get on one of my pet peeves, is I don't like when people don't know what it takes to make something possible. It, it kind of upsets me because it's like, nowadays we have this, man, yeah, we have this mentality like, oh yeah, this person goes from nothing to something overnight success, no big deal, whatever the case is. And it's like, you realize there was a lot in between there. Right. Like one thing I was telling my, uh, I was telling my brother before, it was like, uh, we were, we were talking about like rappers and how they signed these, uh, these, these, dollar de- deals. Yeah, these yeah. deals. And then they, and then they become this new person or whatever the case is. And I was telling him, I'm like, the, the problem with today is that you have everyday individual people who really think that this person committed like organized crime from their local neighborhood and that get, that got them millions and billions of dollars and, and put them where they're at now. No, this person is whoever they were. They made music or whatever. Somebody came, discovered their talent, or maybe they just want to put some money behind them. Then they gave them a platform to then do what they do on a on a magnified scale. But no, this person didn't just commit crimes or or yeah. whatever. It's it's unrealistic on how a they got to where they're at in the messaging of what's being said. Yeah, yeah, be exactly. It's, it's delusional you. that you. It's delusional that we actually think in modern day times, if everybody's uh, doing committing the crimes or let's say everybody's selling drugs, who's doing them? It's true. You see what I'm saying? Like, no, everybody can't be a, a, a kingpin or something like that and make it to the top. And there's legit ways to grow your money. There's legit ways to make it and be successful. It just takes more time. It just takes an actual plan. It takes setting financial goals, having financial education. And this is the things we need to start implementing and putting more light on and showing people, hey, this is somebody successful who has a blueprint on how you can be successful too. I don't know how to I don't know how to go behind you, try to dodge the, the law. Uh, and and do all these different things to get to where you're at. That's not a that's not a blueprint I can follow. That's right. For all those who are watching and listening at home, if you're interested on how to get started and some of the things that we've said to you, you've got to hit the links that are in our comment section, in our bios, things like that. For instance, if you're interested in getting started with an infinite banking concept type of policy, you can reach out to us at the Banking Bros. Uh, we've got a link in our bio. Uh, we'll have a conversation with you. We'll answer your questions specifically. So that could be myself. That could be Robert. A few other people on our team we will walk you through those questions. If you're interested in in using your dollars to invest in some sort of day trading, uh, passive income type investment like real estate, private lending, please still reach out. We want to chat with you. We can help you get started. We can connect you with the right individuals. We've got a lot of connections. Uh, But for now, we've got to give a quick shout out to uh, an Instagram follower that's been paying attention to us on the uh, social channels. And that Instagram follower, it goes by the name of Don Tatiki. Don Tatiki on Instagram. So we want to give a big shout out to Don because he's recently followed us on that platform. He's been paying attention to what we've been posting out there. He's been liking our stuff, leaving comments. So Don, if you're looking, we want to, we want to chat with you, man. Leave some questions below for us. You can leave them on Instagram. You can leave them on YouTube, whatever you're watching on, uh, and we'll get your answers about them. Uh, But for now, that's our episode and we'll see you guys next time.